fighting. Way to go. Thanks. This is great. This is the best thing he's ever written. Yo, burn! You did it. You know, I cannot believe you've got everybody reading this old rag. So where have you been, dude? You're late. Well, I, um, my alarm didn't go off. Well, you set off plenty of alarms around here. Your editorial on censorship is hot. <laughs> the day they came to arrest the book. What a headline. But you know, I really like the way you made the point about how Thomas Jefferson was an advocate of free speech and a free press. Oh, Mad Mike. I'll see you guys later. Oh, wait. Uh, Barnaby, if you have a moment, uh, I'd like to talk with you in my office. Oh, well, I have biology now. I wouldn't want to be late for that. I think a note from me will fix that. Come on. Lucas, Marguerite. The school is getting a lot of publicity as a result of your article. Even though some of the words could have been a little less inflammatory for my taste, it was nonetheless a, a good, fair piece. Your mother must be very proud. By the way, is she coming to the uh, parents' night tonight? No, she's working night shift this week. Is that why you wanted to see me? Oh, I see. Because you're called down to the principal's office, there must be something wrong. No, no, not at all, not at all. That was a good job. Keep it up. Thank you, sir. By the way, I noticed you announced there was to be an article on Mrs. Salter in the newspaper. I don't think that's a good idea. Why not? She's been a librarian for 15 years. Well, she's not feeling very well, and I just don't think she should be bothered. Oh, no, I just saw her. Barnaby, I don't have time to dicker with you. Not one word about Mrs. Salter in the newspaper. Do, do I make myself understood? End of subject. I just thought that I... I absolutely forbid it! Ah, uh, Mr. McLean, uh, George Phelps, Parents for Decent Schools. We were so glad to hear of your concern about the books in our school. Uh, so you'll be at the school board meeting? In force, sir. We're so happy that you're taking such an active interest. Yeah, well, we, uh, Gordon and I felt it was important. Yeah, well, we've got a long road to haul to fight the destructive influences that have crept into our schools. Huck Finn, why, this book goes against the very laws of nature. Now, we've got a list here. I'll get you a copy. And as you can see, there's a good many of these problem books. I only have the one complaint. Yes, but you're a concerned parent, aren't you? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're against this epidemic of drug abuse. Of course. Permissiveness, the undermining of values. Look, we are not for limiting anyone's freedom of expression. But we have simply got to get back control of what we give our children to read. Oh, heavens knows, America's been through a bad time. The collapse of the family, drugs. And now a lot of this filth and negative material has filtered its way down and gotten into our children's reading material. It's quite a list. Now, all of these books contain the references I'm talking about. Now, if we all work together... Hero ain't nothing but the sandwich? Catcher on the rye? Grapes of wrath. I really like that book. Well, you have our active support. It's great to have you on the team. Hello, Mary. Hi. Nice to see you. Listen, are you coming to that bridge party on Tuesday? Great. Did you know A censorship war is raging in America's public schools, as across the country, more and more books are being banned. Today, all eyes are upon an example of that struggle, which is unfolding right here at Thomas Jefferson High School. The book in question is Mark Twain's The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. The heart of the controversy has been summarized in an article written by the editor of the student newspaper and provocatively entitled, The Day They Came to Arrest the Book. We have an interview taped earlier. Hi. Can I come in? <laughs> yeah. Aerodynamically speaking. I'd say she flies pretty well. Yeah, I do too. I came by to tell you that I think it's a really fair article. Considering the way you feel about the issue, I think you were pretty objective. Thanks. 
I, uh, just saw you on TV. Yeah? You think we made our point strong enough? Yeah, hey, you always make your point strong enough. Look at There's mighty Mike Moore himself. Ah, yes. Is there any truth to the rumor that there has been some form of unofficial censorship being practiced at Thomas Jefferson for several years? Selectivity is always a demanding job. Uh, from time to time, minor alterations have to be made in the collection of books. This is normal What's this? For school libraries. This Education. book I've been trying to get out of the library for like three months. It's always out. I didn't think Grapes of Wrath was that popular. Kate, I gotta get going. Um, listen, thanks for dropping by. Listen, uh, could you let yourself out? It's Barney. I know about the books. There are only three books on this list that are still in the library. I want to know the truth. Well, good evening, everyone. The school board is here this evening to decide whether or not to remove the book Huckleberry Finn. Now, the purpose of this meeting is to hear your thoughts before we make our decision. The floor is now open for your comments. My name is Petri. I'm a lawyer. And I'd like to point out that the basis of every other liberty we have would be assaulted if this book were banished. Nazis. Now, we must protect our basic freedom. We have the right to be free of racism in our school. Yeah. Yeah. Are you saying? that we might be better off with a little less freedom to say and write terrible things about each other? But I ask, can you trust anyone with so much power? You are not just anybody. All of you were elected to the school board. You mean we are automatically OK just because we've been elected? In my particular case, do you trust me more because I'm black? Shut up! Twisting words, Professor Lomax. This isn't the game. This is about messing with the minds of our children, yours included. Right. You're here, well said. I'm, uh, I'm Sheila Dennis, uh, Matt's mother. And I'd like to quote Huck Finn, the uh, hero of this book. What's the use of learning to do right when it's troublesome to do right and it ain't no trouble to do wrong? End of quote. Now, is this the kind of philosophy we want to expose our children to? No. Excuse me, Mrs. Dennis. I think the author is simply exploring the character's point of view, not propagating a philosophy. I'm Mr. Phelps, Parents for Decent Schools. I point out that Huck and this grown man Jim were naked together on a raft, and that this Jim keeps calling Huck Finn honey. Oh, I think that sounds kind of weird, don't you? <laughs> Once you give anyone the power to censor books, you're opening a can of worms, and it never stops with just one book. I uh, understand all your points. But censorship applied in a calm, moderate, constructive way need not be restrictive. It can, however, be a tool for guidance. Now, when we take a toddler away from an open flame, is that censorship? 
or guidance. Censorship denies that the flames exist. When this nation was created, our forefathers chose to allow us freedom, even with all its dangers. They actually believed we could be trusted to make up our own minds in all the mire of differing ideas. What if those ideas are wrong? Wouldn't that contaminate the minds of our young students? Yes. yes. Wouldn't it? Yeah. It was your responsibility to make sure this wouldn't happen. We counted on you. What's done is done. There's nothing I can do now. Mrs. Salters, you were the one who recruited me to the paper in the first place. Boy, did you feed me a line. Make a difference, Barney. Uh, your, your opinion will count. But what about you? You're the only person who can help us now. Barney, there's nothing I can do. You know, I thought the... the books and the students at the school meant something to you. I guess I was wrong. Barney. Wait for me. It seems that everything to be said has been said. We all know where we stand. The board should vote. I second that motion. Now, if everything's been said, I think... Um, not everything, sir. Uh, this, uh, kind of interruption is rather unusual. Well, I think I've got... Uh, we have something to say that may affect the board's decision. Aren't you the young man that wrote the article? That's right. If you think it's absolutely vital... Thank you. A school is for opening the minds of young people. Could you speak up, please? I'm sorry. A school is for opening the minds of young people, not for locking up books. Our uh, former librarian obviously has nothing new to add. I uh, move that the school board votes now. Yeah. Yes, if you believe in something, oh, I think Mr. Moore is correct. Uh, let's let her speak. Uh, Mrs. Salters, could you tell us all why you were asked to leave your position of school librarian and advisor to the paper? Well, during um, the last two years of my stay here at Jefferson High, there began to be what I can only call censorship incidents. <coughs> a parent or a group would complain about a book in the library, and then Mr. Moore would come to me and tell me to take that book off the shelf. Well, I'm, I'm not much of a fighter. I, um, I'm ashamed to tell you that I went along with this. I love this town. I, I grew up here. I graduated from this school, and I was afraid of losing my job. But the incidents grew, and I found that I was getting deeper and deeper into this ugly collaboration. Un until one day, Mr. Moore came to me and said that great expectations would have to be taken off the shelf. Uh, pardon me, Karen. Yes, Vivian. I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt you, but are you talking about Charles Dickens? Yes, I am. Charles Dickens' Great Expectations. What can there possibly be in a novel by Charles Dickens that could offend anyone? Well, there are some people who are offended if uh, everyone in or out of books isn't exactly like them. Well, in this, uh, this particular case, the parent objected to the book because the young boy brings food to a prisoner who's hiding out on the moors. Well, she said that it glorified stealing. 
I begged Mr. Moore not to remove great expectations, but he was adamant. A parent had complained about a book, so we lost a book. <clears throat> then I had, I had an idea. I sent a note to Mr. Moore telling him I had discovered a particularly troubling section in a book in our library. This, uh, this section tells the story of a man and his mistress. Now, he and his mistress have an argument, and she runs off into the countryside. He follows after her. They make up, and on their way back home, they are accosted by thugs who want to have sex with the man. With the man? Yes. They wanted to rape the man, but instead, they took his mistress. They abused her sexually throughout the night, and in the morning, when her lover finds her, she is dead. That is sick. Are you finished? No, no, I'm not. There's a lot more. He lifts her up and takes her home, where, outraged and humiliated, he cuts her body into 12 pieces. He shows the mutilated pieces to his countrymen so they will be roused to avenge her death. And you want our children to read this sadistic filth? The book containing that story is the Bible. Chapters 19 and 20 in the Book of Judges. The Bible, Mrs. Saunders? I'm not sure we follow you. Why would you call Mr. Moore's attention to it? We can't throw the Bible out of the library, can we? Well, that's exactly my point. But Mr. Moore was ready to throw it out until he found out which book it was. I told him if he locked up great expectations, I was going to write to the newspapers and the television stations, and I would compare the offensive passages in Mr. Dickens' book with the story from the Bible I just told you. Well, Mr. Dickens stayed on the shelf. But I left. And in exchange for my silence about the censorship deals, Mr. Moore wrote me a very wonderful letter of recommendation. And now? And now I'm breaking my silence. Look, what I did was just it was inexcusable. I knew what was happening. I did nothing. Look, don't do what I did. We are all in danger if this censorship thing goes on. Everybody loses, especially the children. Well, today it's Huck Finn. Now, who knows what book it'll be tomorrow? Mr. Moore. Let me see you, please. You're the last person I expected to see after they decided to keep Huck Finn in the class. I still feel it's racist. I can understand that. Yeah, I think you do. But that's life, and I'm just going to have to deal with it. Well, just deal with it. Write about it. You never give up, do you? I was thinking about those uh, fender designs you modified. Do you think we should copyright them before Lamborghini finds out they've been replaced? Okay, hey, what's wrong? No apples today? What would you do without me, Barn? <laughs>